Hello everyone, my name is Austin. I am the gem cutter behind iFacet. Today I'll be cutting this recycled synthetic garnet. This is what's left over from the production of medical and industrial lasers. Let's get started. So this fancy little machine that I'm working with is called a trim saw. I'm gonna use it to cut our ND YAG, AKA laser garnet into a little bit more workable size. Okay, now that we have it in a more workable shape, we will need to attach a dot stick to it. Next, we will need some super glue. The dot does a lot. That's a dot, right? Now we will attach the dop stick to the stone. Now that we have our stone glued to the dop stick, the next step is to slot it into our faceting machine. Set the angle, lower the mast. Let's get to work. So a little backstory behind this piece of rough we're working with today. Like I said before, this is NDAG, which stands for Neodymium Dot Ethereum Aluminum Garnet. Don't quote me on that pronunciation. I'm not a gemstone scientist, just a humble faceter. These pieces I'm using though are the off cuts from the rods used in these machines as they are unusable and essentially waste. So instead of them being swept into the garbage, gem faceters had an idea to use abandoned pieces of laser garnet to cut into some pretty cool gemstones. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. Currently, I am preforming the stone with an 80 grit lap to make the rest of the cutting steps faster, since this is a rather large stone. Now we will lower the mass to cut the girdle of the stone and set the size. Now the stone is getting its shape. I am now cutting this stone at 600 grit, and this is the final step before we move on to pre-polish. For pre-polish, I am using a Zinc Plus lap with 3K polish. If you are curious about the design, I wanted to go for a design that was similar to a kaleidoscope. I wanted to try and achieve this design by making some of the facets reflect internally like a crushed ice diamond. This is actually rather hard to do with a lower refractive index stone like a garnet. I was able to come up with a design that has some of the crushed glass effect in three different areas of the stone and keep some of the big facets in the middle for some contrast so it really draws your eye in just like a kaleidoscope. I use a light path viewer tool to shoot a light beam inside the stone to see if the light bounces around inside the stone like you see here. A normal gemstone diagram just bounces light off the pavilion and exits to the crown as seen by this light beam off of one of the non-crushed ice facets. Once pre-polish is finished, we move on to polishing and this is where the stone really starts to sparkle. Next, we transfer the stone to the other side to start cutting the crown, and I use a two-part epoxy for this transfer step. Time to cut the crown on 80 grit to speed up the cutting step. Now we are cutting with a 240 grit topper lap. Mm -hmm. 
back to the 600 centered lap before pre-polish. This is how the stone looks before pre-polish, whenever all the facets are cut in on the crown. I think the most difficult part in cutting the stone was polishing the large table. It took me around 30 minutes to fully polish the table. This step is always the most exciting for me because the only thing left is to take it off the dop stick and see if all the hours of work was worth it. This stone has to be one of my all time favorites. Would you agree? <laughs>